Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm going to talk about pointers in C today. This is going to be a very gentle introduction to them. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm just going to go over some basic stuff because you need to get the basics down before we start getting to the more advanced things and the uh, complications that kind of come along with pointers. But as you probably have heard or maybe know yourself, uh, a lot of people are intimidated by pointers, but there really aren't anything to be scared of. It's just a matter of learning them properly and practicing with them. You know, it's funny because like, I rarely hear anybody talking about practicing and programming, but you really need to practice. Like, you know, um, just, it's almost like if you're, if you're learning how to add and multiply, like you could basically sit there with paper and pencil and just practice and a calculator and then just keep checking your answer and checking your answer and experimenting uh, with your, you know, actual writing on the paper and, and uh, you know, with the calculator. And that will help you, you know, develop your math skills, right? Or with anything, like with playing tennis. Well, programming is the same way too, you know? I mean, there are certain things that you will just get better with over time after repetition. And pointers are one of those things. Um, and really any programming concept is not uh, excluded from that. So. Um, what I want to go over right now is, I'm sure you guys are aware, I'm going to use my pointer screen here. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen this, these types of data types, right? Integer, a char, um, this is just a longer integer, basically, because it's a long number. Um, those are our basic data types in C, right? And uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically talking about C here. Um, this is not a C++ tutorial, but I'm sure this also applies to C++ as well. But C++ has other things going on that I'm not going to talk about. So, um, anyways, these are our regular data types. And if you don't even know what these are, then I suggest going on YouTube or Google and just looking up uh, C data types. Um, and you will learn about what an integer is. Basically, an integer is a whole number. In other words, there's no decimal point. Uh, a char is a character, like a keyboard character. Uh, like right here, we're using A. And then a long, long int is just uh, a longer number. Um, if you try to put this, a number this big inside of an integer, it's going to give you an error. So that's really all there is to regular data types, right? I mean, Obviously, you can do more complicated things with them, but basically, when you think of a regular data type, you think of, um, you know, in a variable like this, you think of storing the integer 25 in some whole number. So that way, when we come down into the program um, and we refer to some whole number right here, um, this some whole number is going to get replaced by 25. So when we print out uh, this text on the screen, it's going to say some whole number colon and then 25 because that's what we're storing in here in some whole number at the time. Now, if we were to go like this and we were going to and we would write now some whole number, right, equals 36. Now we expect to see 36 down there because we've changed the variable some whole numbers value to 36, right? Well, um that's pretty much how um that's pretty much how trying to kill it out there all right so anyway um that's how pointers work as well except pointers this the the uh, data type in front of the pointer is very misleading because it's not actually talking about the pointer itself a pointer is denoted by this uh, asterisk or star here. And no matter what data type the pointer is, it's always really of, of data type pointer. So what I mean by that is the variable that is assigned to be the pointer, in this case, it's some whole number pointer. And then down here, it's the letter A pointer. And then down here, it's long freaking number pointer, right? So those are three variables of type pointer. And Really, the int, the char, and the long have really nothing to do with these variables themselves. And that's where people get thrown off about pointers. So what we mean by that 
is that all three of these pointers, even though one's an int, one's a char, and one's a long, long int pointer, they all only contain a memory address of the same size. So what that means is that, see, for example, an integer, it might not actually be the same uh, size, uh, like an integer variable may not be the same size as a char variable, and a char variable may not be the same size as a long, long int variable in memory, right? However, all the three pointers are the same size because they're not, the pointers aren't actually storing integers, chars, and long, long ints. They're just storing addresses. And the addresses that they're storing, if you were to go to that address, then you would find the actual data, okay? So a pointer is storing an address to data, whereas an actual, uh, it, like a direct uh, data type variable like these, which are not pointers, they're actually just storing the data itself. So when I type some whole number in my program, it's going to give me 25 because 25 is be, is what's being stored in the variable some whole number, right? However, if I type um, some whole number pointer into my program, it's going to give me it's not going to give me 25. Instead, it's going to give me a memory address, and that memory address is going to be the the memory address that some whole number is referring to. So, I'm going to show you this as an example. And then, but I'm going to talk about one more thing. You could almost say that you could almost say that a pointer is basically pointing you to the variable which then stores the data. And the variable that it's pointing you to is what's stored in memory, right? So um, I'm going to show you some examples now and I'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to run the program, right? Uh, actually, let me clear this out because I had already run it, and there we go. Okay, so basically, our normal data, this is just our regular uh, variables here of type int, long, char, char, and long, long int. So you can see here, we have this, the numbers, right? We have the number stored in the long, long. We have the character A, and then we have the number 25, which is some whole number, right? Now, when we go to the pointers, though, the pointer, like I said, has an address. These are addresses. These are not actually the data, right? These are the addresses where the data is stored in memory. Okay. That's the difference between a pointer and a regular variable. And as you can see, even though these are three different data types, like this is a char, this is a, a int, and then this is a, a long, long int, even though these are all three different data types, the addresses are all the same size. So the pointer is, is every single pointer basically is the same. However, we declare a pointer based upon what type of data is stored at the address. So instead of just being able to say star something as a, as a pointer declaration, in other words, instead of, instead of being able to just do this, like star some pointer, equals address of whatever variable. We can't really do that because the computer needs to know what is stored at whatever variable. So you have to tell it int, char, uh, you know, long, whatever. You know, byte, whatever data type. It has to be something, you can't just do this. You can't do this right here where you are just saying star. However, you should really think of it like that because that will get rid of all the confusion in your head. Because if you think of it as just a star uh, variable name like this, you're gonna think, you're gonna know it's a pointer. You're gonna think, okay, this is a pointer. So anytime you see star variable name, you know that um, that is being, that's a pointer that's being declared in a declaration, okay? So um, now you know kind of how that works, right? But you, you remember, you can't, you can't do it like this. You have to specify what is here. You have to specify what type of data is in there when you first declare it. So let me get rid of this line here. All right. And now I am going to talk about this ampersand operator here. Because we so we know the star operator when you declare a pointer, 
it is saying this is a pointer, right? Now I want to talk about this ampersand operator. The ampersand operator, as you might have been able to tell here, um, since we're putting it in front of some whole number, it gives us the address of where some whole number is stored in memory. Okay. So if I were to get rid of this, right, now this is not going to work because now some whole number is referring to the number 25, the value that's, that's at some whole number rather than the address of some whole number, right? So we can't do this now because remember, some whole number pointer is a pointer and a pointer can only store memory addresses. It can't store integers. It can't store 25. 25 won't work inside of a, a pointer. And what we're doing here now is we're saying pointer store the number 25 in you. And it's not going to work. Like it literally will not work. This cannot happen. Um, I'll show you. I'll save the program and I'll try to build the program right now. And it's not going to work. <laughs> See? Warning. Initialization makes pointer from integer without a cache. See, it won't work. Okay. So, and even if it could work, it's just going to screw up. The, it's going to screw everything up because you don't want to have, you don't want to have some whole number pointer pointing to memory address 25. It doesn't make any sense. So what we have to do to indicate that we want the address of where some whole number is, is we have to put an ampersand here. Now with the ampersand here, we'll try to rebuild the program again. And look, it builds just fine and it works just fine, right? So the ampersand always refers to the address of whatever comes after it, as long as it's connected to the front of a variable. So I don't want you to get confused because the double ampersand is different. That's like and when you're talking about like, you know, if, uh, you know, I don't know, some whole number is equal to five and the letter A is not equal to six, right? So it's not this kind of and. This is a whole different uses of and, right? So, what, but what it is, is it's just basically saying the address of, okay? So think of and the letter A as meaning the address of the letter A in memory. Okay, now that's not code, that's just for your own fact. Uh, here, I'll make this proper here. There we go. So I'm just gonna put it as a comment, right? So um, that's just for your own knowledge, just to, to uh, illustrate. So that's the basis of pointers. So pointers are variables that store an address and that address is where the actual data is. So the reason why you have to specify still int char or long long int is because the computer needs to know how to approach that information that's stored at the address when you're going to use it. So you can't just say this is a pointer and not tell the computer what. I mean, you, you kind of can when you get more advanced, but you don't generally want to be doing that um, all the time. You know, that's for special cases and stuff because you could you could eventually declare like a void pointer and stuff like this, but that's much more advanced. But basically what you wanna be doing here is you need to know what is being stored at this memory location. And then you need to, when you declare the pointer, use the, um, the data type and then the uh, star asterisk operator, just like this. And then you say address. Now, I'll just give you a couple of uh, typical mistakes that new people make, right? Because everybody knows pointers are confusing and they're hard to learn and everybody hates them, but they're really not that bad. But they can make you, they can allow you to make some nasty mistakes. So, for example, I'll give you a couple examples here, right? So, what happens now if I do something weird like, um, like I say, you know, and some whole number equals five, right? Well, that's not going to work. I'll even show you it's not going to work, and I'll show you what error we get so that you know it's not going to work, and you see exactly what happens when I try to do that, right? See, L value required as left operand of assignment. So basically, you can't do this because I'm literally saying, I'm literally telling the computer, 
change the address of some whole number to five. And you can't do that because you can't directly control the computer's memory like that. Like you can't tell the computer like to change its memory address structure around. You can't do that. So that doesn't work, right? Now, what I can do is I can say whole, some whole number is five because some whole number is a regular uh, variable up here. And we're just gonna change it from 25 to five. I can do that. That would be legal, right? In fact, I'll save it and I'll build it and I'll even, uh, check this out. I'll even print it out for you. So see some whole number is five now instead of being 25 because we changed it from 25 up here to five down here before the program printed everything out. So now I'm gonna show you something else that could get screwy is let's say okay so okay so let me go out over this too real quick so after you declare a pointer like this now if you want to change it around it's the syntax is a little bit different so if i now say the letter a pointer if i want to change what it points to, I could actually just set it equal to another pointer. So if we want to make the letter A pointer point to a different char, so check this out. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to create a whole different grouping here. So I'm going to say char the letter B equals B, right? And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say uh, char pointer, the letter B pointer equals address of, or actually tell you what I'm going to do. I want to say the letter A pointer now is equal to the address of the letter B, right? I'm going to build this. I'm going to run it real quick so you can see what happens. See, it builds, that's fine to do that, legal. And see now, it says the letter A pointer has the data B, right? So you might be wondering like, what the heck's going on here? Because there's a couple of different things. The first thing that's going on that you might notice is that I no longer used a star when I was referring to this, yet it changed, you know, stuff still changed, right? And the reason why is because what, this is the initial declaration and when you, you initially declare a pointer, you have to declare the data type that it's referring to, and then you have to use the star. But now that the computer knows this is a pointer, you don't have to do that anymore. So now you can just use uh, the, the letter A pointer as if it's any old variable, because that's really what it is, because a pointer is a variable that stores me memory addresses, right? And now we can assign it a different memory address. However, um, notice what I had to do there, though, is, is that I had to create another variable um, that was a char because, see, I couldn't do, I couldn't do this. Let me show you. I, I couldn't do, I couldn't do the letter A pointer equals the address of long freaking number. Now, I didn't even spell that right, but. Now, check this out. So this would be legal if the letter A pointer was of type long, long int, right? But it's not, it's, it's of type char because we originally assigned uh, the letter A to it, which is of type char, right? So me trying to assign now the address of a long, long int is not legal. It's not going to work because like I said, the computer needs to know what data type is at the address and since the letter a pointer is already actually a char data type pointer this is not going to happen watch i'll show you right now so save try to run this thing try to compile see here we go see warning assignment from incompatible pointer type so what it means by incompatible pointer type is what i just said so that won't work so that's the reason why i had to go up here right now and make a different char called the letter b in order to reassign the letter A pointer to point to the address of the letter B. So see, now you're starting to see why pointers can be confusing and annoying. 
because what I just said sounds ridiculous. You know, it's just it just gets really confusing. Like you could literally just go on and on like this. Like I can make like something ridiculous, like a pointer to a pointer that points to the point, you know, that that points to the address of uh, the letter A pointer, which then points to the letter B, the address of the letter B, which is also of type char. You know what I mean? So I could be you just, just all kinds of crazy, you know, mumbo jumbo things you can do. But for now. You need to get the basics and the fundamentals down and not worry about all that stuff. So you just need to practice doing this. Like create another, let's create another int pointer, right? So let's say, let's, see. let's just create another pointer here. So I'm gonna say int, another int pointer, right? And I'm just gonna declare it right now. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to, Say another int pointer equals the address of some whole number, right? And now um, another int pointer also points to some whole number. So now we have we have um, some whole number pointer that points to the same memory as. Uh, another int pointer. However, some whole number pointer and another int pointer are two different pointers. So what I mean by that is, um, so you check this out. So some whole number pointer, right? So we have both of these, another int pointer and some whole number pointer, both point to some whole number in memory. However, these pointers themselves are two different entities. So they can be modified um, differently. and um, so I'll show you kind of another uh, sort of step here in learning pointers. And that is there's something called a dereference. And all a dereference is, is, is that once after you've declared it, like I say, you don't need to use an asterisk when you're assigning addresses like this. However, if you want to get the, the value stored in the address out, then you need to use an asterisk again. So you might be like, what the heck are you talking about? And so I'm gonna show you right now. Um, so if I were to say, if I were to say asterisk the letter A pointer, that's going to give us whatever value is stored in the memory that the letter A pointer is pointing to. So if I were to say, um, this, it's going to give us letter B because the letter A pointer right here has been reassigned to point to the letter B and the letter B variable contains the letter B. So that refers to B right now, right? So, however, if I were to say the letter A pointer without the asterisk, that is going to point to some to the memory address. So it's gonna be like 0056, FF, uh, I don't know, A or something like this. This is not, the memory address changes all the time, but it points to a memory address without the star from now on. Now, don't get this confused because when you're making the initial declaration of a uh, pointer type and you have to put the, the data type, you have to um, type the star here as well. But this is just telling the computer, okay, this variable is a pointer variable now. However, after that is passed, when you use the star on the variable like this, it's now saying whatever value is stored inside the memory address that this pointer points to. So in effect, since the letter A pointer now at this point points to the variable, the letter B, right? In effect, saying this, star the letter A pointer, is the same as saying the letter B in our program, because they both point to this data right here. So instead of saying the letter B somewhere, you could say star the letter A pointer somewhere. And at this point in our program, it would still mean the exact same thing. So if you want to change the letter B data, to let's say the, le the letter Z or something like that, you could say star 
you could do this. You could say star the letter A pointer equals Z. And now, if we were to print out on the screen the letter A as a variable, we would actually get Z. So I'll show you exactly what that means. But before I do that, um, I need to go ahead and kill this because this is going to give me a syntax error. The program has no idea what we're doing. So hopefully I didn't leave anything else in there. All right, cool. It compiled. So check this out, right? So it says the letter A pointer dereferenced is referring to Z. And um, see, so you can see up here how the letter A was still referring to A up here. However, down here, the letter A pointer refers to Z, right? And the reason why is because the letter A, we never messed with it. We actually messed with the letter B because we changed the letter A pointer, which had the memory address of the letter B stored inside of it. So even though it was called the letter A pointer, it referred to the letter B. And it changed the letter B's value to Z. And then down in that spot on the screen where it prints out, I printed out down here um, the letter A pointer. So we're, we're actually dereferencing the same memory location as the letter B, right? So now I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to change the code to refer to the letter B now instead of the letter A up top. And now you're going to see that they will match. And what I mean by they will match is that they will both be Z now because the letter A pointer modified the memory of the letter B variable in memory, right? So now I'm going to rebuild the program and see, check this out. So now um, it's Z up here. However, that's sort of confusing because I'm going to actually change this to the letter B so that you know what I'm talking about because there we go. Okay. so. In fact, this is getting really ugly. There we go. So the letter B now contains Z, right? Because it originally contained B, but then we, we changed it to contain Z by using the pointer. And then the pointer itself can also is Z because the pointer is pointing to the same thing that this is. Okay. So you can see now how things can get confusing because the name itself doesn't matter. Um, when referring to the memory, what matters is, is how you're actually referring to memory. So when you're thinking of pointers, think memory, memory, memory. That's the biggest difference um, when you're dealing with pointers versus when you're dealing with regular variables. Because most people, like when they start learning like JavaScript or you know really any language, honestly, but when you start learning a language um, and it doesn't have pointers in it, you basically all you do is you think like you know int giraffe uh, horns. equals two, you know, and, and it's this pretty much all you really think of. You think of now, okay, cool, when I say giraffe horns um, in my program from now on, you know, I'm referring to two. So I could say giraffe horns times 500, you know, and I'm going to get, you know, a thousand or whatever. You know, I could, I could do something stupid like this. So you could say like, now I'm going to say int uh, multiplier of giraffe. I mean, this is just silliness, but so is a, so now we're going to do basically two times uh, 500, which is going to give us a thousand, right? So that's usually the way you think of uh, variables in programming, and you know they obviously you know you can change them and mess with them and stuff like this. Like you know in languages uh, which aren't like strongly typed, like JavaScript, you can even change the like you could say like now giraffe horns equals uh, like hello there or something, which is a huge no-no in a strongly typed language because giraffe horns is a type int. You can't do that. But obviously in JavaScript, you could say something like bar and it just, the compiler or the computer figures out whatever you're trying to talk about. However, you need to stop thinking like that in general when it comes to pointers because when it comes to pointers, you need to start thinking about 
memory. So there's one more step here. In other words, instead of thinking about giraffe horns as meaning two, really think of giraffe horns as storing the value two in the computer's memory. So that way, when you start thinking of a pointer, like you could say like int uh, pointer, giraffe horns pointer equals the address of giraffe horns. It's a whole lot easier to wrap your head around when you think of giraffe horns being uh, an area in memory where two is stored. Because now you can think, okay, cool. So I'm going to store inside giraffe horns pointer, inside giraffe horns pointer, <laughs> um, that memory location of where that two is stored. And now I can say, okay, well, I want to get at that. So I want to modify giraffe horns, right? So now I could say, uh, you know, giraffe horns pointer uh, equals 25, right? And now you can see that's totally different. You know, we've basically modified uh, giraffe horns indirectly because we've we've directly sought out the memory that giraffe horns is at and we've changed it to 25. And this comes with more confusion and complication. But what I suggest doing is just list. Write yourself a little program and just play with these things. Play with the ampersand, play with the, the asterisk, you know, and play with assigning these pointers like this versus assigning the regular variable and get errors, you know, screw stuff up and piss off the compiler and all that stuff and um, just play with it, you know. And um, honestly, the best way to do this, in my opinion, and this is this came from a, a guy who's, uh, you know, who I learned stuff from is to just keep it real basic, you know, don't even use an IDE. Just use a simple text editor. Like you can even use Notepad, but Notepad doesn't have syntax highlighting. Um, I use this thing called Emacs, but that thing is has a whole learning curve, which I don't really recommend unless you are a really patient person. Um, but just get out Notepad or something and just play with this stuff and um, just use a straight up compiler. And if you don't know, if you don't have the plain old compiler, uh, Google GCC for either Windows or, or Linux or whatever, and um, you know get that thing and put it on your computer and just use the command line like I'm doing. Super easy. Just go back and forth, and when you want to build a program, uh, you just GCC dash O, and then you tell it what what uh, what you want the name of the executable file to be, and then where to get your code from, like what source file, and that's pretty much it. So I just suggest doing that for practice, and just have fun with it. You know, do things you're not supposed to do. Do things that are quote unquote unsafe and dangerous. You know, even like if you've learned functions already build a function and like basically put a pointer inside of there and see what happens when you try to dereference memory that is out of scope. So in other words, um, you know, after the function is finished, um, try to reference a pointer to the memory that was in that function, see what happens and just stuff like that. And just get more comfortable with it and uh, enjoy it because it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. I'm going to see if this thing can build right now. I don't know if it will. Oh, I guess it does. But anyway, um, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, tune in next time. I'm going to go over some more in-depth pointer stuff. Take care.